very passionate about what he does, so over to him. All Great. Thank you, Mark. Cheers. And thanks for turning up to my session. It's always nice. I think we're being streamed. So if you could keep the uh, profanity to a low murmur, that would be really appreciative. Just let me do that. All right, I can get into trouble. I'm going to do two things today. I'm going to give you a short uh, contextualizing presentation about what you can use social media to save time and money. Uh, the competitive kind of label on this course, I, I, I kind of take it for a given that the services and the products and the, the things that you actually do, the best thing to be competitive is obviously to be the best. So I'm taking that as a given. You're awesome at what you do. All I'm going to do is show you social media tools to make it even more awesome and uh, if it's that other word, you know, just make it better, save you time, save you money, get that reach out there, okay? I'm going to do that first of all, and then I'm going to jump online in real time, break down some of those attitudes, those attitudinal barriers, if you like, to take up of all this stuff. So I'm going to show you in real time, creating lots of different types of uh, digital content. Because straight away, for most people, that's a barrier. By the way, I'm, I'm going to touch on Facebook and Twitter, but that's only a very small part of social media. Okay, and we kind of, we're all aware of those, so I'm going to hopefully touch on the other kind of theories and strategies and bring you a cross-sector idea about what other people out there are doing with all this stuff. So you can nick their ideas, basically, which we all like. Cool. Um, so let's get into this, and let's have a bit of fun, hopefully. Well, I, I kind of broke this down, uh, this presentation, into kind of, I think, about eight or ten key points that I want to share with you, because I've got a restricted time. Usually, i got longer when I'm doing a master class. So I've kind of really drilled it down and condensed it. And I'm going to give you, show you, like, top-line ideas, okay? The first one being is play. Play is an amazing strategy for learning. And someone touched on it right at the beginning, uh, said that we're going to give you a chance to play with these technologies and stuff like that. For most of the time, when we deliver our training sessions, that's all we're doing. We're creating environments for people to play. And we're challenging them through playing theories and strategies. Uh, because playing is one of the best learning strategies there is. The younger you are, the more you're taught through play. The older we get, play disappears in our learning. And there's no reason for that. There's no basis for it, actually. So I'm going to reintroduce that playing attitude straight away. And that's our, our major thing with social media. Because unless you're pressing the buttons, literally you've got to press things to make them work with technology and online. The web is just a whole web of buttons. You've got to press things. Yeah, you realize that. So unless you're in a playing attitude of pressing things to see if you can break it. By the way, I've tried. You can't break the web. OK, there's always a back button. So let's get into that attitude going forward. Okay, and that kind of, you know, fun attitude of playing is learning by stealth. That's what we say. Okay, the more fun you can have, the actually learning. Playing with a purpose, if you like, put it another way. Okay, one of the big things at the moment online uh, that social media is really the purveyor of is this, this humanization of brands. Okay, this has been told or said by a, a few people out there at the moment, but I won't even focus on this guy. He says it probably the best. You know who this guy is? Anybody here? Shout out his name. Okay, cool. Um, this is a guy called Gary Vaynerchuk. Okay, or Gary V for short, because he's got a funny last name. Uh, he runs a company uh, called Wine Library. Uh, sorry, he runs a, an a online company called Wine Library TV. And that's basically what he's doing there. And he's taken his dad's wine company from a 4 million uh, turnover company to a 45 million turnover company in just five years, but only using social media, nothing else. And what he was doing is just putting himself up there. He humanized his whole brand online, okay, using and utilizing social media. Because we're all aware, like Twitter and Facebook, it's P2P, yeah? It's nothing to do with B2B or B2C or anything like that. Third sector versus commercial sector. You're nothing online. You're just a person, okay? Brands can't tweet. I hate to tell you people, if you're on Twitter and you're a logo and I'm blah, 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 be human, okay? That's how you get there. And what he says, and I start with a quote and I'll end with a quote. This is just a really nice quote for him. He talks about websites as being a, a place to communicate and facilitate you know, sales. Okay, we can understand that. But a blog, in other words, the social media aspect of your online world is the essence of your brand. I really like that. So use social media to be human, but by being human, you're the essence of your brand. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit more. But that's kind of a big idea going forward for many people. Okay. Yeah, yeah, fine. How are you? <laughs> I like that. You all right? Yeah, great. Okay, that's a, a big kind of takeaway. Anybody here from an organizational point of view, not a personal one, we'll come back to that, 
Anybody here blogging from an organisational or company point of view? Anybody here who's in an organisation who blogs? One. You are allowed. Okay, one. Anybody here blogging just because they're cool and geeky? Wow. Okay, cool. Maybe there was a hand up there. Maybe I don't know. I don't want to admit it. I'm a geek. I'm going to show you a short little video now uh, from two guys talking about the ROI of this stuff. Because that's what we want to get into. I want to talk about outcomes, not output here. In other words, I don't care if you're on YouTube. Really, I don't care where your website, if it looks really funky. I want to do the outcome of that output. Yeah? Now, a third of my traffic, mediasnackers.com traffic, comes from me being on Twitter. And a couple of other, my guys being on Twitter. A third of all our traffic comes from Twitter. So there's an outcome associated to my output. And that's really important with social media. It's got to be a metric, a measurement associated with it. Otherwise, you're just uh, voicing a crowd. Okay? But I'm going to show you uh, specifically around blogging at the moment, because I think blogging is an amazing tool. And these two guys are going to argue the ROI case for it. Okay? One guy's called Seth Godin. Some of you might be aware of big internet guru online, bald head, maybe rolls around in publishing. Okay? The other guy you might be aware of is a guy called Tom Peters, an old management guru guy. Some of you might have heard of him. Okay. Okay. They're just talking about blogging. Okay, listen to these guys, really cool. How many of you have a blog? All right, blogging is free. It doesn't matter if anyone reads it. What matters is the humility that comes from writing it. What matters is the metacognition of thinking about what you're going to say. How do you explain yourself to the few employees or your cat or whoever's going to look at it? How do you force yourself to describe in three paragraphs why you did something. How do you respond out loud? If you're good at it, some people are going to read it. If you're not good at it and you stick with it, you'll get good at it. But this has become much bigger than Are You Boing Boing or The Huffington Post. This has become such a micro-publishing platform that basically you're doing it for yourself to force yourself to become part of the conversation even if it's just that big. And that posture change changes an enormous amount. I, I, I will simply say my first post was in August of 2004. No single thing in the last 15 years professionally has been more important to my life than blogging. It has changed my life, it has changed my perspective, it has changed my intellectual outlook, it's changed my emotional outlook parentheses, and it's the best damn marketing tool by an order of magnitude I've ever had. And it's free. And it's free. So and we like things that are free. Let's be honest, okay? So I want to kind of make that big case, and I'm going to show you blogging later on. I'm going to show you how quick it is to create a blog. Literally, three clicks. That's all it is. Three buttons you got to press. That's it. But I want to make that case of blogging is an awesome place that you can just talk about what you're up to, connect with other people, show people rather than tell them. Okay, no, it doesn't have to be just written word, bless you, um, and stuff like that. So I'm going to make that big case going along. Um, Seth Golden touched on it, I think he said, about conversation. A conversation is king online. It used to be content is king. Remember that phrase in marketing and PR? Right, cool. Conversation is king. And I want to use uh, a completely different uh, case study here, Ford. Ford are doing amazing stuff with social media at the moment, which I'm sure you're all over. You know, because, you know, you like stuff like this. Right, cool. Ford is doing um, lots of different things. I want to just focus on two things that they're doing. Uh, anybody know who these gentlemen are? I didn't uh, about a year ago until I really got into this. Um, <coughs> the guy on your left, the guy in the red tie, you can just make him out, is Alan Mulally. He's the head of, so he's the head of Ford, sorry. Top dog, chief whip, all right? Can't get bigger. The guy on the right-hand side is Scott Monty. He's head of, like, digital communications, basically head of social media for Ford. He's got a, a jazzier title in there, but that, let's be honest, that's what he is, okay? And what they're doing there is Scott Monty got a huge Twitter following, like something stupid like 50,000, might be more, might be less, don't know, but a lot of people follow him. And what they're doing is taking questions for Alan Mulally through Twitter. They're humanizing their brand want of a better word, which we talked about right at the beginning. And not only that, they're connecting with their consumers, clients, customers, potential, what, whatever you call your people that you serve. It's the same thing. And the model can be replicated. Okay, you can actually, that's how you can use these tools in a really cool pro-social way and a pro-business way, if you want to take it that. I'm going to show you a short video now from Scott Monty. Remember, he's the head of digital 
dude, okay, social media, talking about on CNN why they, they really dig social media as a big company. Check this guy out, talk it. Uh, what, what about this medium? We hear the potential that it has and that there is more advertising money flowing towards networking, but it still only adds up to, I think, 8% was the last figure that I heard of the total advertising. So it's still got a long way to go, doesn't it? Uh, it, it does, and you know we're not interested in advertising on social networks. We're interested in getting in there and interacting with people. Right. You know now more than ever that people can self-publish and can you know put up their own content and, and be their own publishing houses. They have a voice and they expect to be heard. And when a large corporation pays attention to them and actually starts uh, conversing with them, it, it really uh, lifts the lights uh, for a lot of people and says, "Wow, Ford is actually paying attention." And f in my mind, you know it, it's less about a campaign and more about a commitment. This this is an ongoing way of doing business that we're going to see, and if we do it well at Ford, it'll be democratized across the entire Scott, company. How do you not find just Alan? Me. I just did Alan Mulally as a search on. His opening salvo: We're not interested in advertising on social media. But, yeah, yeah, right. Mm -hmm. uh, but they're, but they're interested in doing it differently. They're interested in being people online first. They really are. Okay, and look at their other efforts as well. Stuff like very traditional ideas of communication, like a press release. Anybody here be involved in press releases? You know, we kind of all have at some stage in our lives, you know, the, the four W's and H and stuff. Um, and then they get your name wrong and they cut and paste the wrong bit and got the wrong pit. Uh, but this is uh, Ford's social media press release. Really kind of funky. All the images are hyperlinked to Flickr pages so you can go and leave comments or use it, embed it somewhere else. There's uh, RSS feeds here, another way you can subscribe. So instead of waiting, going back to the, the space and see if they've updated, you get that notified sent to you. But what I really like about these <coughs> is right at the bottom, they've got a little box that says join the conversation. Okay? All they're doing there is linking to other people on the web talking about them. Right? Sharing that link, love. Okay, that'll drive you up the Google rankings much better than any other word placement. Okay, it's called trusted link. One link going out, one link coming back. Trusted. Okay, you get the big boys business week. We also got some really random people on Blogger, you know, Blogspot blogs, just talking about Ford and they're linking to them. They understand they want to link to people now talking about this stuff. A bigger <coughs> organization, but people. Really important. Much more likely to write about Ford if you've ever been linked to them or by them. Hello, you got a question? Yeah, jump in with questions. I don't really mind. I'm still trying to get my head around Twitter and Facebook. Do they have some massive software? Uh, that's oh, we've got a mic. So people can stream, so the world can hear you. Okay. Am I on? I don't know. Okay. Um, you know, I've, I, you've, you've sold me. I think this is fascinating stuff. Um, I, we've got Twitter and a Facebook page, and I'm not using those at all. And I'm looking at this thinking, wow. But do Ford have some fantastic software package that allows them yeah. to link into that, which is outside the financial things of third sector organizations or small businesses like mine? I can't speak for them, but they probably have got some monitoring, a media monitoring system set up, third party like Radian 6 or 9, I think, can't remember what they're called. Uh, but there's, there's people out there that will do that for you. Okay, but smaller businesses, you can set this up, and we set these up for our, our clients that literally Google searches, Google alerts, you've probably heard of that. Same thing, that'll tell you when you've been linked to. Okay, so you can do this for nothing actually and you can always keep on top of the of the conversation you set up like searches i'll get into i got one slide just on that so i'm not going to answer you fully because it's going to come up if that's okay thank you yeah no thank you cool um so the next one i'm going to show you is actually tell you that most people are getting it wrong out there if anybody's involved in marketing or pr what well, mostly you tell the story about your company and your products and your services uh, around just the idea that you've got something to communicate. You wait till you've developed something, then you shout about it. Huge PR push, let's go to town, let's hit everybody up we know and tell them. We're saying that maybe you should think about telling or, or communicating the process rather than the product. Because the process is actually where the juicy stuff is, the interesting things, if you like. Because I know when I see a speaker and they talk about a really interesting project, or I just hear someone talking in a, in a network group, I'm going up to them and I'm asking all process-led questions. In other words, how do you come up with that idea? You know, who, how do you get so-and-so involved to partner with you? What are the hurdles, you know? And that's all process, yeah? That's why we like the make, watching the making of DVDs. 
yeah, or videos, and, and we like stuff like that because we're interested in how they came about with it, not what it is at the end, okay? I'll give you a real life example. Uh, we wrote a book, and I'm not pimping it, but I'm just showing you, we wrote a book. I'm not pimping it because you can read it online for free. There we go, that's how we roll. Um, so don't buy it, buy it if you want, but read online for free. But we wrote this book and we were releasing kind of ideas around the book well before we come out with it. So we told our world and our community that we were doing this. Uh, we shared like the intro when we had it, intro chapter and stuff like that. Just, you know, to slowly talk about the process. Then we realized we couldn't use the image, the original image we had for a front cover. We're like, don't. And it was like quite close to us kind of releasing this. Uh, and basically we went to our community and asked them for their help. And someone, long story short, someone in, uh, in America helped us out, took a couple of photos and we used one. Hello. Are you all right? Are you online, DK? We have any problem with the I'm book? online. I'm lovely you're online. Right. You're fine. Yeah. Thank you. Random. Thank you very much. Um, mm, story, book, didn't have image. Yeah, I'm just here. Really <laughs> and then... Someone in San Francisco basically sent us a few photos and we used one, that one, gorgeous looking photo. And I believe we wouldn't have got that response if we hadn't shared the process up until that point. In other words, if nobody knew we were doing a book and then suddenly asked them for something, it would be like, well, what's the book again? Um, what are you doing? How are you going to release it? We told them the whole story before we got to that stage. Now, I understand for many of you that might be a, a mind shift or a paradigm shift, if you like, okay? Uh, be, and there's also questions about IP, intellectual property for some people, I don't know. But you can always tell the story like two steps back, if you like. So you've already done half of the work and you're t telling them the process bit. Or at least share that process, get a video camera, uh, you know, stuff like that, or, or talk about what you, the meeting and, and what was decided at that meeting, rather than waiting until everything has been, you know, formulated and you've got the product at the end or the service at the end. Share that stuff, you know? Process over product, definitely. Embracing constraints. This is a big one for um, everybody at the moment about this idea of, you know, we're in, a, what was it, the era of austerity or whatever. Uh, we really believe the more constraints you give me, the more creative I've got, I've got to become, you know? Constraints liberate my imagination, okay, is one of our sayings. Uh, and this comes from not drinking, but this idea of martini media. All right, Martini, you're all aware of. I'm not making an assumption. You're just all aware of the brand, okay? Um, the tagline to Martini is any time, any place, anywhere, if you didn't know, okay? Some of you probably were aware of that. Cool. So if you think about that in the context of media, and if I describe something to you as Martini media, you're obviously kind of thinking, what? But think about it. Media that can be accessed any time, any place, anywhere. Why? Because we've all got these now. You know, we've already discussed that. We've all got the means and mechanisms to access content and to share it, more importantly, to share it on the back of the bus or in a meeting that we've just had, you know? So that idea, if you like, take it to the next bit, which is digital takeaways. And I want to give you a solid example of this in, in real life, which is we were given a brief by a theatre up in um, Liverpool, the Ev Everyman and Playhouse Theatre up in Liverpool. Very simple brief. Uh, get more young people to come along to this play that we're putting on. Okay, cool. Uh, oh, by the way, the play next week. It starts next week. Three, one. Oh, okay, that's quite tight. You know what I mean? Uh, oh, by the way, we've got no money. Oh, okay, cool, cool. So lots of constraints and really tidy. So what we did was come up with this really simple idea around Martini Media, which is create mobile vouchers. So you can kind of make out those are some of the characters from the play, speaking in character, something provocative. Literally five seconds we videoed them. That faded to black, and at the end it just, a couple of words that said, show this at the box office, get in for a third off. Something that they had done, the theatre had done previously with paper. In other words, they printed, done the same advert, but in a local paper, cut this out, bring it along to the box office, get a third of price. That's a very simple kind of sales tool that we've all been aware of, the voucher system. We just did it via mobile technology. We went into two existing groups of young people, turn your Bluetooth on, guys, because it doesn't cost anything to send content, rather than MMS, and sometimes costs. Uh, and they just shared this, and there was a set of six of them. They started to share it with their friends, and we literally, the play had already started by this time. She said, share it with people you think would be interested, you know? And literally, you know, we only had another two weeks left. We had 200 kids through the door with these mobile vouchers. Because it was a metric again, it was a measurement. Because a box office, when they got showed this, they could take a little box that said, you know, and that's, we had that built in, because that's very important. We want to see the impact of this stuff. 
But that costs us nothing to create, nothing to propagate out, you know, distribute, no gatekeepers in a sense. The gatekeepers were our consumers, okay? We knew everybody had a network. We all have networks here, yeah? Understand everybody else has networks to leverage, yeah? And really simple, that's a model. Don't look at what we did, look at how we did it. When you ask the how question, you turn what we've done into a model. A model can be adapted and adopted, yeah? So in other words, you can steal this idea and use it. In other words, when you're at those meetings, don't give people pieces of paper. We like the trees where they are, you know? And send them something digitally. It's the same thing, it's communicating the same thing, the essence of your brand again. But it's a digital takeaway that can be shared, yeah? Maybe? Cool? Yeah, cool. Maybe. Okay, last couple of ones now, uh, which comes back to your question uh, and, and something specific here about searching and drilling down. Uh, we did a very small piece of work with a global recruitment brand, and for us, we like to be a bit prog provocative, and we said to them, I can find you customers or clients for free, and someone who wants to use your service, and we're going to use Twitter to do this. And they were like, go on then. And we did. So very simple. Who's on Twitter here? Let's have our hands up. That's half of you nearly. Cool. Thank you very much. Have you played around with the search engine in Twitter? A couple of nods. Yeah, okay. Mainly no. It's brilliant, right? Uh, one of my guys who works with me says, searching Google is like searching the dead web. Okay? Searching Twitter is like the real life web because there's people on Twitter talking in real time about real things. Right, I kind of get it. So that's a really cool thing to think about. So if you're a global recruitment brand, you're interested in people talking about certain things. Yeah. So you can go to Twitter and you can type in the search bar right at the top, lost my job, or thinking about changing my career, or thinking about going different direction, bored of my job. Anything that you think could communicate that they might be interested in your service or product. Yeah. And bang, you get a whole list of people talking about that thing that you're searching on. And more importantly, if you go to search.twitter.com, you can drill down, like I can search within 10 mile radius of this place, people talking about whatever I'm into, pigeons, you know? And a man can drill down. I'll give you a real life example. One of my friends is a massage therapist down in London. She does like Reiki and stuff, okay? Now I can, I helped her use this mechanism to basically find people within a 10 mile radius of her studio, people talking about got a bad neck, or I've got a bad shoulder, or a bit stressed today. These are people who could do it with a massage or a Reiki treatment, yeah? And bang, you can hit them up with a nice reply. And again, if you're into something specific, if you serve a, a specific community, or have got a theme or an idea, uh, or just, you know what I mean, into certain things, get on your Sign up just to play around with the search engine, because it's quite fun. Yeah, and you can drill it down, like I say, you can really drill it down like five mile radius of where you are or in other countries to see what they're talking about. So again, that kind of answers out the monitor. You can set those searches up. You can not just one, lots of them. You can set up an RSS feed from that so that it keeps on sending you stuff when that happens. You don't have to keep going back in. It's one shot. Wow. Oh, it's free, you know? Mm. It's really cool. Um, we do some work with cultural and arts organizations, and they talk about engagement a lot, creating engagement around projects. And, and that's fine, and all that means is participation or interaction. It's the same word, it's, sorry, it's a different word for the same thing. You actually get some feedback or conversation. And what we try to make the case of is that's all right in isolation, but can you just be engaging? which is different, and I've got two stories to kind of demonstrate that. Rework is a book from some guys called uh, 37 Signals. They wrote this book to try to reimagine work, okay? And um, they, they write under chapters like underdo your competition, meetings are to toxic, you know, uh, planning is guessing. So they're trying to rethink how we traditionally do work, really like them. I read this book, and I kicked it old school, I got my mole skin out, my pen and piece of paper, and I paraphrased every, every paragraph. For me, it was for me, no one else, right? Because it's kind of, I don't really think like that. I need to kind of condense it down. And I took that and I put it on Nat Nat. Because Nat Nat is my personal blog, okay? Because I'm weird like that. But I got a blog called Nat Nat and I chucked it up on you and I linked it up and I called it a cheat sheet. Because I created a PDF about uh, my moleskin images. In other words, I took, well, I got a friend to help me actually, lay out all my photos and took all the photos, yeah, of all, my, all the notes, because there was quite a few of them, it was a big book. And uh, I put that into a PDF, it was a long PDF, and made it available to download for free, and called it a cheat sheet. 
Okay, you don't have to read about, you can cheat and you read this if you want. It's just my notes, okay? That's all it was. What was really interesting about 10 days later after I posted that, this guy called Jason Freed, not Freud, Freed, uh, put out a tweet. This is his tweet that he blocked out. Uh, rework cheat sheet, and there's the link to go and download it, freely to download. This is the author of Rework, right? The guy who wrote the book. And I really thought he could have gone a different way with that. You know what I mean? He could have like, you know, here's a letter from my lawyers, you know, something like that. But he didn't because he understands how this stuff works. He knows that for me doing that, embellishing his work a little bit, he's hitting my network. He wouldn't have been able to get my, my, my network, you know? And I'm tweeting out about that. He's retweeting that because he likes it. And he's showing how other people can do it if they want to. Okay? And bang, obviously, skyrocketed. Yeah? I got downloads about 5,000 when he tweeted that out because he's got a big network. What was really funny, literally a couple months later or a month later, a guy called Rich Gould. Hello, Rich. I'll never meet you. You're in the States. Uh, seriously, I haven't met him. And he took my work and he added color to it. Literally, he downloaded my work and he just put color to it because he thought it lacked color. All right. So he re remixed my work. Okay, thank you. So he re remixed something that I kind of condensed. And then literally last month, a guy in Switzerland, I think, a guy in Switzerland, took my work again and remixed it but made it a little bit more corporately looking. Okay. So now he's remixing something from Rich School that I kind of put. from, And that's really different in terms of what's going on out there. Like, we're not getting paid for this, just geeks mucking around with too much free time. So that's one example. The other example is I'm gonna kind of uh, give props to my mom here. My mom is awesome, yeah? She does awesome things for me. And one of the things she does is solve my problems. One of the big problems with moleskins, as you're probably well aware of, is no way to put your pen. Right? Uh, seriously, it's a big problem. There's lots of hacks out there, geeks talking about how to hack your moleskin to hold your pen. My mum come up with this solution, which is you kind of make it out like a ribbon around your, your uh, moleskin. It's uh, an elastic ribbon. You can put your pen in. Really simple, like a little pocket. She's really cool like that. She's really creative. And I put that up online. Again, on that nat, I made like a little how-to, took photos of her, and she thought, you're weird. And I thought, yes, I know, but trust me. And I posted this around January time, 09, online. And I called it, you know, my moleskin pen holder from my mom has come up with this answer, brilliant, download it, you can make your own moleskin pen holder. Cool. And it got downloaded a thousand times within that year. Well happy with that. My mom can say, oh, right, okay, there's people out there interested. Then, in June this year, it got featured on Lifehacker. All right, Lifehack is a huge site. If you don't know it, check it out. So to hack your life, make it easier. Big, big site. And literally within a couple of weeks, it just went boosh. 10,000 downloads, thank you very much. Okay, and the point I'm trying to make here is probably not a very good one. But the idea about creating engagement around a project, using social media around a project is fine and well and dandy if you're piloting it. But actually really to use this stuff in a really good way and to get results from it, you've just got to be engaging. Just got to use it anyway and not think about, well, what do I actually tweet out? Do I tweet out I just add eggs? Well, if you want to, but maybe you think about value for your, your uh, followers, maybe a little bit different. And you get that as you go. You've got to have a go at it. You've got to be engaged. You've got to answer people, ask questions, create content for your followers. Yeah? Put it out there. Tell the story about what you do. Does that make sense to you about being engaging rather than creating engagement? Yeah? Cool. Last couple now. Really simple one. As organizations, you've got to cultivate a culture of using this stuff. Yeah, social media is very much about a bolt-on process for most people. Oh, yeah, let's tweet about that now. Whereas kind of it's just, you know, going back to the engaging thing. But sometimes with our clients, we suggest doing social media Tuesdays for them, especially the bigger organizations where they set aside a specific time in the calendar. First Tuesday of every month, uh, around lunchtime, everybody gets together in one room who are geeks, and they show off. They show what they've come across lately regarding social media and ideas that they have. But it's a specified time. And that's really important. You've got to cultivate that. It's not going to happen with one person. Yeah? Social media is not a one person job as well. You know, it's a cultural thing where everybody gets it. You know, it's not, well, you know, tweet Dave does that. No, it's a cultural thing. You know, let's cultivate that culture of engaging, being engaging. Oh, engaging. Last slide, man. Last, the big point right at the end about change. People hate change. We're people. We don't like it. You know, I try to embrace it. I really do. Because most people don't realize that we talk about change a lot 
in our work, you know, innovation, uh, we've got another name for it, you know, usually. But it's just change and it's just equal to doing something different. For most people, that's a problem for them because they suddenly feel they threatened by their work. Because I got a job, I write, P, you know, PR, I, I write press releases. I know you're talking to me about this. Yeah, it's different, isn't it? But we've got experiences we can bring and sometimes I am talking people out of their jobs. I'm sorry, the world has changed. It's not turning back. You know, I'm sorry, we can't rewind. So you've got to get with it. And I want to share with you an awesome quote from this guy called Alvin Toffler. If you don't know him, check him out. He's an educationalist. Uh, he also wrote Future Shock a couple, well, a couple of decades ago, a really big, influential book. Um, and he, he said this, the illiterate of the 21st century will not be those who cannot read or write, but those who cannot learn, unlearn, and relearn. Those that cannot learn, unlearn, and then relearn. Because I think we're at that point, guys, tipping point, if you like, of all this social technology stuff. It's really changing a lot of stuff out there, traditionally, how we communicate. Um, and if we can't unlearn our ways and relearn new ones, we're kind of lagging a little bit, aren't we? Or maybe scuppering our chances to get involved in really cool projects out there or communicating what cool projects we're involved with. Yeah, it's a big challenge right at the end. Sorry, to, mm, but it's a good one. Yeah, it's good because we're all people. We love to learn new things. We're really good at it, by the way. So if you haven't already, please write that down because that's mediasnacks.com forward slash DIW2010, which is the hashtag, which is on the back of your little things if you forget it. Okay, on there is just the website, my website with a big click here button. Click the click here button. There's a PDF on there, which has all the links to everything I've just talked about, all the platforms, all the theories and stuff like that, all condensed into one little takeaway. You can go home and impress your friends and family, all the links to the videos as well, and all the links of the stuff I'm now going to show you as well, which is very important, the, the, the doing bit of this stuff. So please check that out. Very simple. So now I'm going to go on and very quickly in 20 minutes show you a couple of platforms. Uh, I've got a short amount of time, so hopefully I will wrap through this. Wait, I'm going to show you. I'm going to play around, basically, because playing is learning. You got a question? Yeah, come in. Yeah, it's. Um, it's like what? <laughs> Could we wait for the mic? Sorry, at the guys at the back, just so the people uh, across the world who are watching this in in Singapore and everywhere can. Right. Listen okay. To you. Uh, the, the question is not exactly about what you're presenting, but okay. it's w what is Media Snackers? Oh, are you man. a project? Are you a company? Good question. Uh, what What do you do? And uh, what, what kind of sector are you in? Uh, you know, do you work with community yep, groups? Yep. Do you work with the private sector? So just, just a little yep, bit of background briefly. about you. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, Media Snack is, has been going for four and a half years. We work with people to inspire them to learn and live and work differently using social media. Uh, we work cross-sector. We work with the BTs and the, uh, the Ubisoft and the Channel 4s and the broadcasters, right through to voluntary sector groups and councils and arts and cultural organizations. And we love that. We don't want to be specific to a sector because we nick ideas, basically, from other sectors and introduce them to theirs. That's all we do. Uh, we do a lot of training. I do a lot of this. I talk, I do keynotes, I do master classes, we do mentoring, uh, but we also, the main, main crux of our job is consulting, um, so sitting down with people, doing what I call the round table stuff, sitting around the table, talking about where they are, and then we usually do the training afterwards with them, so we get people to do this stuff, rather than just talk about it. Yeah, everybody understands the theory, but unless you're pressing the buttons, guys, you will not know what your social media policy will look like. Please don't write one. Yeah, start using social media first, and then write one. Because then you understand what you're writing about. So that's what we do. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Cool. Right. Uh, anybody use Blogger here? Quick hands up. Blogger. Yeah, it's really simple. Cool. Anybody use Audioboo? One. Cool. And they're cool. Oh, two at the back. Yeah, cool. Animoto. Yeah, Animoto is really cool. Uh, issue. Slideshare. Slideshare has been around for a while now. Say a while, about five, six years. Uh, Google Docs. You're probably all over. The, no, one person. Okay. SMS poll. Right, these are the platforms I'm going to show you. So that's great. Not a lot of people, not everyone knows these things. So that's good. I'm giving you stuff that you haven't seen before. These will be in the PDF anyway if you miss all these. I'm out to spell it funny because they are a little bit. I'm going to actually drop out and hope that it'll hold up. I'm talking about the web because we've had some fun. And if you're on the web, you probably should. I'm going to sit down for this, sorry, because I'm going to do this. But basically, you're going to follow me. You can follow me, but it is a bit fast, okay, because this is supposed to be a master class at the end of the day. So I'm going to jump into Blogger. This is where I'm going to start a blog for you guys today. Very excited. I am. Okay, let's create a blog. I love the way most social media helps you through this. How do you create a blog? 
click the create a blog button. It's really cool. I'm being glib, but I'm not because it's really important going forward. People ask us these questions all the time. Click the button. Uh, it's going to be called the DIW 2010, obviously. Oh, let's paste that back in. I'm just going to call that blog and nick the branding of the whole conference. Great, you haven't got it. I've got it now. Unlucky. I will give it up if you want it back for a price. Um, so let's just do that. That's to fill out the little form, you know, to see if I'm not an evil spammer. All right. Just follow the instructions, fill out the thing. That's to choose a template. I'm just going to press continue. If you were counting, I was three clicks. Three clicks, I got a blog. I now talk about my cats and my curtains to the world, or my kids or whatever I'm into, you know what I mean? And bore the hell out of people. Fantastic. Let's start blogging, okay? Click the start blogging button to do this. Uh, and I'm going to create a post. Now, for most people, you're going, okay, blogging, I've never done that before. Hands up you who's written an email. Everybody, right? You can blog if you can write emails. Because this looks like an email. The title would be your subject. So I'm going to go, hello world. That's my first thing, okay? And I'm sophisticated. I'm just going to blah the world. And I'm going to publish that post by clicking the publish post button. All right? I'm going to view it by viewing the post button. Sorry I'm not being clear, but seriously, we train people and we sit next to them and we tell them this all the time. It's really cool. Hello, Dan. I am online. Yeah. Um, okay, cool. So this is me online and this is my blog. Isn't that cool? Yeah. All right. I'm already online. Right. Let's go and add some more juicy stuff to this because we're not big fans of just doing that. So I'm going to jump into Animoto. Now, for, I think one person here knows Animoto. Okay. Animoto is uh, like an MTV style slideshow. So you've probably got a lot of photos as an organization. They probably sit in your hard drive. They only come out when you've got a report to write. All right. I'm right. You know what I mean? So I'm going to show you what Animoto is rather than uh, tell you because it's better to show rather than tell most of this social media stuff. This is literally me uploading about 12 images that I'd taken when I was in New York last, uh, New Zealand last year and uploaded uh, 12 images and I'd chosen within Animoto the music. It's already built into this platform. It's cost me nothing to do. Okay, and I choose, oh, no, we don't want that. That's cool. Uh, and I chose, like, how the style and stuff like that. But it's all built in, and it's really cool. Uh, there is a paid version to this, and it costs a huge amount of money, about $30 a year, all right, to, to actually, you know, subscribe to this, which means you can make longer videos, all right? I don't think that's going to kill anybody's budget here. It's like 20 quid or whatever it is, okay? But this is what it does. It <laughs> So you can see it quite sexy. It changes all that transitions. I haven't done that. I just uploaded images and chose the music. That's all I've done. That's only my part. Not very creative of me, but hey, because it does it for you. makes you look good. All those photos, I'm sharing the process here of my meetings, of my events as it happens, rather than waiting to do a report. Bang, it's up there. Look at this, guys. And because it's up there, it's shareable. So if we go to this lovely video toolbox, it says share, edit, remix. We want to share stuff now. You'll start to see this happening more and more. The most beautiful kind of word in the English language, online at least anyway, is embed. Embed. We like the word embed. All that means is you can take that content and put it somewhere else on the web. In other words, embed it somewhere else. And we want that because we've got a blog now. We want to pull all this exciting content in one place so people can find it, aggregate it if you like. So I'm going to click that embed button, and this is the scary bit. It gives you all that code. Oh my God, run away, hide. Seriously, click the copy code button. They've made it so easy for you. Copy the code and push this into your blog. Okay, I've copied that code. I'm going to create a new post on my blog. How do you do that? Where you click the new post button. I know, it's that simple, isn't it? It's really cool, guys. Hopefully, boundaries are a drop in and this is my animoto and i'm going to paste that code in you can right click and paste or control v i think if you're rocking a pc uh, a mac some um, apple v for me i'm just going to publish that Ooh, scary code don't worry just paste it you know you're an adult it's all right and i'm going to view that and what happens is literally that little video that was on my animoto site is now on my blog that people now can play and watch and listen to and get a flavor from, but on my blog instead of, instead of sending them somewhere else. Okay? And we're gonna do that quite a few times now, that thing, but with different types of content. So keep that in mind, that embed copy code. That's all you need, embed copy code. 
It's really simple. But that's Animoto. I'm sure you could use that in some way. Let's kick it kind of old school and check out SlideShare. Only say it's old school because it's been going going um, for so long, actually. So long, six, seven years, whatever. But it's one of the stalwarts online at the moment. What this does is it's a place to host your PowerPoint presentations or your PDFs. It takes that as well. But mainly your PowerPoint presentations. Okay, let's check out uh, Let's what well, this guy is. Ah, why I love slides. Let's go and check out this presentation. So I want to show you rather than tell you what it does. All this guy's done is upload his PowerPoint presentation. It strips out the transitions, by the way. Sometimes that's a good thing because I hate to hear that type write the text transition or that shroosh in transition. Stop doing that. And and no bullets as well. Oh, this a, that's oh, weird. No, let's go to a proper you suck at PowerPoint. That was a video. Sorry, I don't know why that's doing it. And basically, because it's online, it can be shared. But like I said earlier about metrics, that's really important. Because up here, you can see the content and how many times it's been viewed, which is quite a lot. Well done, him. Uh, 929 favorites. So if someone has favored it, stuck a thumbs up to it. And it's been embedded 323 t 22 times. So in other words, people have taken his content and put it somewhere else. So you can, when you put your content up there, you can measure its impact. Or you can follow where people are taking it which is a really cool thing. So that's why I like to say. So this is basically someone's uh, PowerPoint presentation, which is you suck at PowerPoint, which is great. And I'm just forwarding that. I can go full screen. If you've never seen SlideShare, you can go full screen and just use my cursors like I would, you know, normally in PowerPoint because it's online, it's good. And because it's online, we can now embed it because there's that gorgeous word, embed. We like that word, remember? We like that word. So get that on a T-shirt. And that's giving you a code, a piece of code, I don't need to know what that is. All I need to do is copy it. I think everybody here can copy stuff, hopefully. It's, uh, if you don't know, come up, I'll show you. Uh, I'm going to go back to my blog. I'm going to create a new post. You all know, do that now. I just showed you. Click the new post button. And I got something from SlideShare now. It could be my presentation I did at a conference or something. But it's like my slide deck that I'm going to impress the world with. And I'm going to publish that post. And you know what's going to happen. It's just going to appear on my site. My you suck at PowerPoint is now going to appear as if by magic and it could be shared like that very simply so that could be your brochure your program it could be anything it could be people tell you know uh, you explain to the world what your organization does rather than tries to tell it show people what it is much more interactive the web is kind of trying to figure out whether it wants to work or not but there it is it is working there okay so now it's that digital takeaway idea same thing martini media in practice, right there. So that's PowerPoint. Uh, let's have a look at a couple of the other things I want to show. Oh, Issue. Let's check out Issue. Anybody use Issue? Issue is awesome. <coughs> it's awesome. It came across this. I just wanted to lick the screen. It was that good. <laughs> just me? Yep, just me. Um, issue is a place to put your, like, let's click on one of these again to show you. You probably produced uh, hard copies of stuff like brochures, uh, leaflets, flyers, uh, programs, anything that could be created digitally, sorry, um, physically, could be created digitally because obviously it's got to be designed. So ask your designers to give you a PDF version of whatever they design for you. PDF, yeah, we all know PDFs are just the file format. PDFs can then be uploaded here, okay? And you can now read it. I can click here and view it in full screen. Woo, let's view it in full screen. And it's just like a digital magazine. Now, there are paid versions of this online, programs you can create like a digital magazine out of, uh, but they cost a lot of money, and the web is catching up with me here. Um, come on, catch up. There we go. And it's a really cool little digital magazine. It's very Apple-esque. It's flash-based, so it won't work on your iPads if you're a geek, sorry, uh, but it will work on every other system unless they lock flash down and they're weird like that. Some places do. Um, and you might think, okay, that text is a little bit small. Well, if you click on it, you can zoom in. Uh, they've thought about everything, you know, you can zoom right in if you really want to. Um, and it kind of works, you know what I mean, digital magazine. But if you think about just your annual reports, maybe you're an institution that has to do an annual report. A lot of people do. Um, luckily, we don't. We're private. Great. Um, so you guys do, and you probably print them and send them to people. So I'm going to halve your print budget today by saying get on, get on here. Check your stuff up on here because there's stats related to this as well. So if your content is on you, just like a YouTube video, you can see how many times it's been viewed or not and decide whether that's a good strategy for you to create all this content in that form. 
Yeah, man, you got a question? You use similar program called Udo? Yep. Si similar stuff does it pretty much the same i like the interface on this so that's why we just show things we like to be honest but there's a, there's a lot of pl platforms out there like and scribed is another one if you've seen scribed we just like the interface of this um and again i can take this content and i can put that on my site but you know how that works grab the embed code i'll let you go on with that because i want to show you a couple of other platforms i don't want to be caught up on just one okay let's show you a bit of uh Let's look at Google Docs, because no one was using Google Docs except for the gentleman. Two people, three people, four people, five. The geek at the back with a camera, cool. Five people use Google Docs, which is not many here. So let's jump over to Google Docs. Now I'm gonna phone my mate to get him out, me and out with this. I'm gonna use Skype. You're all aware of Skype, yeah? I don't have to explain what Skype is. Just a program that's free, you can talk to anybody in the world, as long as they got Skype and an internet connection. Um, Hopefully the web will hold up because, oh, look at me, I'm sucking the traffic now. Um, and I'm going to jump over to my Google documents. And hopefully I will see a Google doc. Here we go, there. And even if my guy doesn't appear online, I'm hoping he will jump. See, the Skype is hanging. Just like going, I don't want to play. How boring is that? But this is what a Google Doc looks like anyway. Let me, let me go back to my documents because it doesn't appear I can, I can edit that. Let's create a brand new one for you guys. Brand new one. Brand new document. Because Google Docs is just like Word online. If you know how to use Word, you know how to use Google Docs. And this is going to save you a lot of time and money. It's going to keep you ahead of some of the competitors out there because you're saving that time and money and putting it in other places, you know, where you want, actually want to do some good work. Uh, I'm going to title this uh, the DIW DI 2010 document. And I'm going to, just going to start talking. This is it. So this is kind of just like Word, yeah? And there's my mate saying, hello. Oh, he's giving me a link to a Google Doc. Uh, okay. Ah, there it is. Uh, thanks, man. Thanks, man. So he's already talking to me. Uh, go to town on the dock. Bang. Cool. Let me get out of this document then. So this is a document that my mate Mark has just set up. He's based in Somerset at the moment. Uh, I'm not going to talk to him because I think that's going to, you know, pull the bandwidth. Usually I talk to him at this point and we can see him and we can stick fingers up at him, you know, thumbs up at him. Um, and usually what we do is I collaborate with a lot of my guys. I employ sometimes seven people, lots of affiliates and associates. And we use Google Docs because we don't have an office. So we jump on Skype together and we use Google Docs to lay out our projects or our project proposals even or our project plans. And we do it all in kind of semi real time. If you've got good internet access, this really works well. If you haven't, it works, but not well, as it's now showing. Because basically, I know Mark is feverishly updating this at the moment, and you're kind of not seeing that. Because if you've got good internet access, you can see it in real time being updated. Now think about that in real life. All those meetings that you travel to, all those Word documents you get sent via an email to ask for your inclusion of, yeah? The track and review changes and then someone bowls it up and you haven't got the latest version and then you've got to go back and find out who is it. You know the score, yeah? So I'm going to save you emails, I'm going to save you traveling time to meetings, and whoa, there's a screen grab of me doing my thing. Cool. So you can see what he's doing. He's adding content in, which it could be live content. In other words, links here. We got images. We got text. So when I work at project proposals, this is how we do it with our guys. And I can share it with them. I can add a permission-based sharing. No one else will see this document. Totally safe. And I know Mark is online because I can see it. Look, also editing now. Mark, it tells me who's there. Really cool. And you've got all these permissions, I can share it with some of you because I don't trust you. So you can just see it, but you're not allowed to edit it. I've got all that built in. And all my invoices, all our documents are in the cloud. So I can access them on the go. And I know if my hard drive dies, meh. You know, it's all in the cloud. I'm safe. So it's kind of, there's other reasons to use this stuff as well. Okay, if I just scroll out, hope you're enjoying the day. I think we are. Thank you very much, Mark. Um, but you can see how kind of cool it can be. Yeah? <laughs> Not just a communication tool. You can see I sometimes use this with Mark when we're literally sitting across from each other because he can work on some part of the document and I can work on the others. But instead of what would you do traditionally, do the Word document, sit next to each other maybe and send it back and forth maybe. It's really live. Good ideas, bad ideas. You can stick tables in there. You can really do a lot with it. Okay? 
Is that cool? Time, is it? You give me time. Right. I'll go out. When do I finish? Quarter past. Seriously? Okay, let's go out and uh, hi. Now I start at half past. Yeah. And it's uh, 75 minutes, isn't it? You go to another one. Okay. So let's finish there then. But I'm going to show you. Oh, 45. Sorry, mine's wrong. Do that to me. Good. I'm just going to thank Mark and get him. <laughs> you get me going, Anna. Uh, thanks, Mark. Uh, we'll leave you to it. Smiley face. And maybe a ninja. Okay, little things like this make the world go round as far as I'm concerned. You know, it makes the day go a little bit easier. Cool, so let's get out of that. Let's go back to my blog because I want to add something more to this, okay? I want to finish up with uh, maybe an audio boo because I do have time for that now. Great, cool. So I think one person here has used audio boo. Big fan? It's okay, yeah, it's cool. Okay, audio boo is actually funded by Channel 4, which I found out recently which is one of those innovation lab things that they did. Uh, and I'm going to use it in conjunction with my iPhone. If you've got an Android phone, it got the same thing. Uh, but you don't have to use phones to use this. I'm just showing you the extended functionality. Audioboo is just basically audio. You chuck up audio online. It's a place to put your audio interviews or, or commentary. Okay, really simple. Okay, let's, uh, let's jump on my app here. I'm going to open it up. And I'm going to record me just a, a little snippet and I'm going to show you what it looks like, okay? So this should be fun. Uh, I'm just going to start here, and it's counting me down. I'm just going to record currently uh, kicking ass. Cool. I'm just going to pause that, and I'm going to publish that. Very simple, walks you through it. All right, just did a recording through my phone. Wow, this is cool. Uh, I'm just going to call it something random. But more importantly, I'm going to take a photo, because that's really nice, not just to do audio. So if you could all just wave like before, there we go. There we go. It's lovely. I love the way you're working it. That's great. Thank you very much, people. And I'm just going to say done. And I'm going to upload. And basically, that's going to show me you know, it uploading, which is quite nice. Cool. So that's, imagine if I'm out on the street or I'm visiting some of my you know, uh, constituents or even if I'm visiting my partners and stuff like that on a project. And we can record you know, maybe what was the outcome of a meeting or something, epiphany you had you want to share with your community. Again, sharing the process. These are the kind of stuff you do. It's not waiting to get back and formulating lots of stuff. You can do it on the fly, almost. And press done, douche, up into the cloud. And now if I go to my browse, remember I just did that there, and I, call, I didn't call it anything. It's just a mess, what I called it. And you can see the mess that I called it. Let's click into that. And hopefully, yep, you can still hear, there's my head. And there's the photo. There's the photo, people. That's you, that is. Looking great, must say. Been working out. Great. And this is currently uh, kicking ass. Great. So that's how simple it is. And I've just, boosh, flew that up. And what's quite nice is it geotags me as well. So what it does is literally sticks me on a virtual map. And I think it's done it quite well. If we scroll right in, we can maybe see. That's quite good, actually, isn't it? It's found me quite well. Yeah, on the other side of the road maybe, but not too bad. Yeah, I'm there, aren't I? Rather than there, I think. Yeah, but it's not too bad. Oh, right, okay, yeah. But that's what it does. Oh, yeah, it should be a little bit higher. Maybe. Cool, huh? That's all through there. But what what is really cool as well, if I just scroll up, there's our lovely word again. Embed. Yeah, so I can literally just crack and copy that badass code and jump back to my blog and now I've done some interviews on the fly and I know they're there but I want to aggregate them and obviously I'm going to stick them on my blog so this is my interview that I've just and I don't have to just do one, I can put several there because it might be that I interviewed the whole group or something uh, and I'm just going to publish that post, I might want to put that photo in or do a video or add some context to it, I'm just adding you know, the, the juicy stuff at the moment and you know what's going to happen just like with everything else, it's just going to embed that little player that I can now play. Currently uh, kicking ass. Go. Cool. It's really simple, this stuff, yeah? All it is is that copy and paste in to get really dynamic content. It doesn't have to be yours as well, remember. You can get good content from other people in your industry, in your sector. And that's as important as well. Don't just talk about you guys, because it's just like a real room being online, full of real people. And if you meet people who just talk about themselves in a real life situation, 
you want to go for a pee very quickly, don't you? You know, kind of make an excuse anyway to leave. And you say, you know what, don't talk to him. He just talks about himself. So be careful online. That's another big takeaway, guys. Talk about your industry. Talk about, be human. They talk about sector. Share ideas with people, not just about what you're doing. Obviously, talk about it, but all the time. This is not a broadcast mechanism anymore. It's a dialogue, not a monologue. Yeah? Very important, big takeaways at the end there. Um, I want to end it with something that's quite uh, cool, I think is cool. Uh, it's called M SMS Poll. And you might see iterations of this, like Poll Daddy, um, other things, Poll El Everywhere, or Poll, poll Elsewhere, whatever it's called. Uh, but SMS Poll is one of our favorite ones, just because it, it kind of works. So let me, let me show you this in action again. It's better to show rather than tell. If you've got a mobile phone, could you help me with this one? And could you drop the 10p or 12p? I'll pay you back if you press us. And join in with this. It's very X factor. Okay, so this is my SMS poll. I've already saved the, uh, the copy and paste code over here because sometimes it just, oh, undo that, just takes a little bit of a while to load. So I'm going to copy that code. So I've set up a poll already. It's already set up before I arrived here. And all I'm going to do is view it. Uh, let's have a little look and boost let's go full screen straight away full screen right could you participate because otherwise this is really poor if you don't right it's really simple have you enjoyed the social media session today what you just did okay and it's really simple if you have you vote yes and you vote yes by texting the number 2050 to the number above there see it's just like x factor okay without the karaoke bit all right, it's really cool. And if, it, if it's no, 2051, okay, to that number. If you're in the wrong room, 2052, all right? And that's cool. Someone vote for that, just to show me, because I don't want all yeses. I want to show this. And as if by magic, something is already happening. I like this app, because what it does as well, it doesn't keep your numbers, all right? It takes the numbers, it discards them. I can't see your numbers. So data protection, child protection, all those other protection bits, all safe using this app. I haven't had to download anything. Okay, it works in the cloud. This is really cool. And you can see it's happening live. I can scroll over and I can see how many people, the mean votes. So notice seven people voted for me there. That's the mean, you know, cool. If I scroll over there, two people. So I'm gonna get you after school. Okay, meet you in the playground. Um, but you can kind of see this stuff happening live. Really cool, huh? And because it can go full screen, you can project it anywhere. All right? So if you're at events or work in schools and stuff like that, this is a really cool little little um, uh, platform. This is a paid version, though. I just got to give you that little bit of a caveat. Oh, someone voted no? Great, cool thing to illustrate that I'm not doing this. There is a paid version to this, and I'll just show you in terms of uh, transparency the, the actual cost, but I don't think it's a lot. And if you're just mucking around with it, cost free is a free version just to play around in the office to see if you really like it. Uh, but there's also a really big package if you look on that end of the ground. Uh, but it's scalable. You only pay per month. Okay, so it's not a tied into the year contract. Um, and like I say, you haven't had to download anything. There are a lot of companies out there that does this, but you've got to pay them a lot of money for their programs. And you don't own the programs or anything. You know, it's kind of third party stuff. It's will load in a minute. But while it does load, I'm going to show you the other aspect of this, because some people about accessibility might not have phones. Might be a question around that. Cool. You can also embed in uh, the web voting system here. Okay? So people it can vote through the web. So maybe you've got stations around the event or something, physical stations I'm talking about, and they can vote. They can go over and go, actually, uh, no. I didn't like it, and I'm going to click no, and it says, thank you for your vote. See, it went up, it went up, uh, and that's cool. And what's also cool, if you click no again, it won't accept the vote, because I've locked down that function. In other words, I said, I'm only accepting one vote for one terminal, or one mobile phone number. If you try to vote again, it won't take it, all right, because I've, I've said, you can also open that up. What's also really cool as well, you can export all the data out as an Excel spreadsheet. For those number of people in the house, you know, that's really cool then. You can crunch it and, and reposition it. But, but it's just the medium of getting all that contact. Yeah, Mark? Do you get the data of who actually phoned in? The Sorry, there's people waving with mics at the back. Sorry, Mark. Go. Does it give you the data of the phone numbers that have come in? No. 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 It, go, it doesn't do all that, which I like, actually, because then I'm not tricking anybody. And it doesn't send you another text back as well saying, you've just voted, now go and buy this. 
You know, it's kind of really transparent and cool. That's what I really like about it. That's why I'm going this route, not for the other routes out there. The other ones kind of do it. Sometimes they do. And check out all of them, by the way, because don't just take my, you know, word is gospel. There's other places that do this. If it does everything that you needed to do, cool, go for it. Let's just very quickly look at the plans. Um, those are the kind of costs that we're talking about here. The biggest cost, 600 quid a month, but we're talking 100,000 votes there. I uh, don't know if you're stretching that far. Maybe you do, and that's cool, one-off payment. But even the kind of bottom middle, 35 quid for 5,000 votes per month, 300 votes per poll, that's usually kind of a, for an organisation, that's enough, just for one shot maybe as well, because you can just try it. Or if you just want to try it out in the office, like I said, you can have a play around just to see if you're a really small organisation, this could be really cool. Yeah, so just transparency, there is a paid version of that. The other ones have paid versions, but they're not much. And uh, like SlideShare have paid versions, but not that much. Uh, so let's have a quick look at my blog, which I started 20, 25 minutes ago. I just want to show you kind of what my idea of a blog is. It's kind of not written. It can be written, but it's going to also be so much more. You know, you can change the size of that later on if you want, or change the whole look of your blog. Um, here's my interview uh, that I did, my audio interview. I had a SMS poll at the top. This is a slide deck, maybe of mine, or maybe of someone else's work that I find really interesting about my industry. That's my Animoto. You remember the MTV-style photo slideshow thing? And right at the bottom, my word. <coughs> You know, you can kind of see the other stuff is quite dynamic compared to what I usually have to write to tell people what I'm about. Can we show them? Can we interact with them better? So hopefully I've broken down some of the attitudinal barriers that are inherent in lots of people when I show them social media. They're like, well, I don't have, you know, I don't have a degree, so I won't be able to use that. I'm not big on computers. Can you write an email? You can blog. You can copy and paste. You can do this stuff, you know? You can go to phone. You can do this. Really cool, huh? So that's me. We've got 15 minutes, I think. Uh, 15 minutes uh, for questions at the end, which is good. I really wanted that. But if there are any questions, could you wait till the, uh, the mic gets to you? Because then, like I said, the world can find out. Yeah, the mic is over there, young lady. Cool. So are there any questions? There's uh, the lady at the back. Sorry, you've got to run all the way around. We'll just pass it back. Throw it. Thanks. Yeah, this is a really Luddite question, but but where where does the blog sit in terms of if I wanted to keep accessing my blog, and how do other question. people access my blog? Let's do the latter one first. How do people get to your blog? Really <laughs> simple. It's through the URL. Okay. In other words, the web address. Okay, the web address for this is diw2010blog.blogspot.com because I'm using Blogspot or Blogger, it's the same thing. They always put the blogspot.com at the end. You can pay $10 and get rid of the Blogspot and then I can have a blog on a site on you called diw2010.com through Blogger. Right, cool. Uh, so that's very simply how they can get to your site. Share the URL. Right, that's how. How do I get in? Well, I go to my dashboard up here um, or I sign in through blogger so if I go back to blogger.com which is where all these blogs sit I'll find all my blogs plus this one that I just created and that's how I get to it there's my blog up there yeah and I can go in and I'm gonna edit my posts and this is the back end of the blogging system and straight away like oh my god it's not it's just like anything you know it's just a little program i can go in and i can edit all my posts i can go into the comments section and i can see no one's commenting here because nobody knows anything what's really cool in the settings i can change all the settings on blogger i can make it private in other words no one else even if you add the url if i made this private you wouldn't be able to see it no search engines will be able to find it i've got that control so a lot of times with our clients, we use Blogger or blogs as an internal tool to share ideas. If you think about it like a digital scrapbook, yeah? So if you're working in a department and run a certain project or cross-departmental, you could set up a blog and use that as, a, as an interface or an aggregation point for everybody who's involved in that project. Digital scrapbook, dumping ideas, <laughs> things that they find. And you can do all this privately. Uh, I can lock all the comments down in this because that's one of the usual questions I get is, what about if someone slags me off on a comment? I don't allow it to go public. You know, I can control, at the moment, who can comment. There it is. 
at the moment only registered users can comment or I can market only members of this blog or no one can comment or anyone I've got all that built in I got to approve a comment before it goes live or I can just let it go live all those permissions are built in to blog that's why we like blog it's got all that functionality in the back if you want to use it you don't have to you go, and we always say start a blog mark it private make all your mistakes there and have fun and don't worry about it you know and just go for it and then you'll be yeah but I want to make it live because I want to talk to people and that's good because you suddenly realise how that works and that's where you go can I just ask you one more thing about RSS feeds because I've seen that on Outlook but I don't understand what it is Okay, RSS feeds is a bit of a geeky thing, but uh, explained very simply is BBC, new site, lots of RSS feeds. So you can tell the BBC to send you, <coughs> to feed you information just relating to Wales, okay? Because all these feeds are specific. They could be around a topic like science or country like Wales. And most blogs, well, pretty much every blog through Blogger and everything else, they got a feed as well. So, in other words, I can grab that feed, and all I'm doing is getting that information from that one source. So it's get feeding me, okay? That's just the feed, the RSS feed. In Outlook, you can subscribe to those feeds, and you can just, instead of going back to the website, maybe you have favourites, maybe you have five favourites, or bookmarks saved as favourites, and you go back to them because there's always interesting information that happens. But think about all the time you waste going back to those sites. Feeds can feed you that information when it goes live. So you get notified when something is new on that site rather than going back and forth waiting for it. It's a bit geeky and that's a session into it. So I would have just done a session on RSS. I love RSS, it's amazing. But I'm weird. <coughs> Any other questions? Or have I melted your brain too much? Yes, Mark has got a, maybe a question. Well, you yeah, haven't covered it today, but you, you mentioned a bit about Facebook earlier on. And I followed uh, another keynote you did before, and, and uh, I think you mentioned a company called Vitamin Water. Who, oh, yeah. who basically, their Big website fan. is the Facebook page. Do you, are you finding that as being something that's more common out there now, where big companies are, are using social networks as their main platform? Yes, it's called uh, what we were calling um, hardwiring conversation. In other words, uh, people like Barclay Card, for example, if you've ever seen the latest Barclay Card advert, and you, it goes facebook.com forward slash Barclay Card. And you're going, whoa, that's different. Usually it would be barclaycard.com. Obviously, they're trying to get traffic to their site, you know? And uh, what is happening out there is basically people are understanding if we can direct people to places like this, for one, that's where they are, fish where the fish are. I'm not a big fan of that saying, but for some. Sometimes it's right, okay? Loads of people, half a billion people are on Facebook, you know? Um, so that's a good thing. In other words, people are on there to talk to. Um, Barclay Card know that if they get people to join them on Facebook, that's where they can talk to them, yeah? Not just tell them stuff, talk to them. Humanizing brands, embracing conversation, all the things I was just talking about, you can do that now online. I'm waiting for this to load, it's not loading. But basically, Vitamin Water is the first ever product that I've seen Okay, that has on its bottle the the Facebook. Join us on Facebook. For, as productized in the product itself. Come and join us on the label. I haven't seen that before. I've seen it on adverts. I've seen it on paper. You know, come join us on find us on Twitter and things. But I've never seen it on a product. And I think that's the shift. You're starting to see the commercial sector, which are usually the leaders, uh, shifting in in this space and trying to what we call hardwire conversation into their brands, into their products, into their services. So again, so, yeah, it was very interesting because I know that's the UK division of Vitamin Water. But if you type in um, vitaminwater.com, which is the American kind of equivalent. Right. It just takes you directly to a Facebook page. They haven't got a website. You're over, yeah. And, and, they, got, and they celebrated the two million fan or something last month. So yeah, it's two huge. million fans. Uh, yeah, all over there. Yeah, it's really interesting. Sorry, I forgot to throw out. Anybody who asks me a question gets a free book. So Mark, heads up. This is always a fun bit. And you, hello, hello. Oh, oh, sure. And anybody else did ask me a question? I can't remember. Did anybody ask me? A There's someone around it. You, you did. Yes. Sorry, it's always fun this bit, isn't it? It's like, whoa. Okay, anybody else? Here we go now. I've only got two left. So, anybody got a question? Come on. If I haven't shown you anything as well, 
that won't help you to do your job quicker, cheaper, or a bit better, let me know. Rhys. Um, sorry, could you sorry. wait for the... Sorry, man. Um, I was reading about companies using um, things like Facebook and Twitter for their intranets and for their internal communications. What's your take or view on that? Well, that's a good one. Um, in terms of using Twitter for like an intranet, is that we? Yeah, cool. Um, there's something called Yammer out there. Now, Yammer.com, Y-A-M-M-E-R, is basically Twitter, but internally. Okay. Uh, one of my guys uses it a lot. He really likes it. I kind of like it. I don't use it that much because I'm a bit more trans. I'm just more transparent what I'm doing from day to day. And I, but it's a great way of logging what you're up to. Uh, so if you think about everything functions to do with Twitter, you can use it in Yammer, lock it down. Okay, no one else can, and it's like invited permission based stuff like that. Using Facebook as an internet, yeah, again, you can start a group and you only allow certain people in that group. So yes, it depends what you want to get out of it. Again, what's the outcome you're trying to create? Okay, let's look at the mediums out there to help you create that. It might not be an intranet site. It might be that you start a blog, an internal blog, okay, or a wiki. You know, use pbworks.com or something like that. As long as you understand what's the outcome first before you kind of go straight into it. But those are the couple of things. PBWiki, pbworks.com, yammer.com, check that out. Um, or even blogger, like I said, something like this. Um, there's loads of other virtual things out there that you can use for that. Is that cool? I need to throw you a buck. And there's one. Good hands. One book left. Okay, cool. Yeah. Uh, you know, with, um, I, is it issue or... I, I, well, issue, yeah, with, with, yeah with, with issue is it basically you just upload any PDF into it and it turns it into a digital magazine or do you have to do things with it scarily enough it's that easy it's that easy you can upload as well PowerPoint and Word documents I'm sure as well uh, but really it likes PDF it eats up PDFs because usually when you design a PDF you're already designing for that yeah. functionality of as a booklet or a program or a brochure so it already has multiple pages but no it does it all for you it turns it into that dynamic, you know, not just click here to download our PDF. So it kind of does what Animal does, but... Yeah, it makes it, instead of click here to download our PDF, it's click and read our PDF. Go full screen if you want it. Yeah? Is that answer your question? Look out. Oh, it's, oh I dropped I it. I wanted to wait. Oh, yeah, sorry. No. And we need a microphone for the young... Uh, here we go. Sorry, you're making him drop everything. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> last, last question then before we wrap up. I'm obviously around for any more chats, but I need to change rooms, that's all. Cool, go. It's really interesting to hear what you can do with social media sites, how you can use them all and integrate them, which is the interesting bit for me, trying to build our own, um, which could maybe be on Facebook or whatever. What, in your view, is the function of a website? Good question. I think I got to kind of go back to my one of my first slides about what Gary V was talking about. You know, websites for us like our website is our web blog. A front page of our website is a blog. Yeah. You know, because it's the most. If you think about all the news pages of all your site, latest news, news, whatever you call that bit of your site, <coughs> you should update. You should be in should yeah, uh, update. That's the most probably evolving bit of your site. Yeah. So think about that as a blog. Well, maybe I want to pull that to the front because your landing page is probably the most hit if you look at all your, your stats. So I want to put the most evolving bit of what I'm doing on the front page. And that was our decision to move the blog to a front page. We didn't originally have it there. We had it under the blog tab. But we moved it in. So websites, for me, can be now web blogs. They can be spaces of aggregation. I'm not saying, no, all these Facebooks and Twitter, they've got to have a purpose for you. You know, they have no come associated. Animotos and all the other things are great to host your content, but I pull it back into one place. I want, I want people to come to my site because potentially, I'll be very honest, I want them to purchase what I'm selling, which is my time or my services or my book or my ideas or listen to some podcasts, watch some vodcasts. It's all on my site. It's aggregated, but it's spread over the network. But I'm linking back as well. Very important. It's about if you got on Flickr, for example, or on YouTube here and you've got content on it, 
please make sure that content is linked back to your site. In other words, it just has context. You know, so many people have, oh, I, I check out their YouTube or their Flickr sites, and they've got all this good stuff on there. And I click in and I see a picture, and I'm going, that's really cool. And there's no description, description of that. There's nothing of why that photo exists. And most people find your content randomly. They might, you know, follow digital breadcrumbs and fall into this Flickr page. And man, there's a photo of there of you guys out in the forest in a cool tent. Just because I know that's what she does, by the way. I'm not just making stuff up. Cool stuff out in the place. Right, okay. So where's the context of that? Where's the description? And where's the link back where I can find out more? And again, that's, that's that trusted link back to the space where that is placed. You know, all our YouTube videos have a place on our site so that people can drill back and find out the context or the, the, the people behind who made that video. And that's very important. That'll boost you up the SEO and it'll also just make sure that other people come from other sites, from other places. It's called close, uh, closing the circle. Can you? Very quickly show you. Uh, okay, let's jump into flickr.com forward slash media snackers. And we use Flickr to host all our receipts. Okay, seriously, we do receipt, do a lot of things. Flickr's great. We can just put all our seats, all our traveling expenses, we go on it. By the way, they're all private. You can't see them. It's just I'm logged in. But what a great way of using Flickr, yeah, to host all our stuff because, you know, paper dies and it gets rid of. But let me show you, um, okay, we did a, a session up in North Wales for Cuffley TV. Really good session with them. I took uh, a couple of photos and... There we go. There's the description of what we did. There was a lovely cake there that we took a photo of. And underneath is the descriptive text about what we were doing, where we were, and what we do, and where you can find out more information. That's simply what we mean. You know, because there's so much content out there, we've got to contextualize it. Yeah. Make sure people can come back or at least understand what the hell are those for. Well, it was just some food at a training comp thing that we did with some TV professionals. Oh, well, I'm a TV professional. I might want to, you know what I mean? It's all those things. Cool. So let's wrap up there. If there's any more questions, I'll be here for the next 10 minutes packing down and moving to another place. But please hit me up. Uh, there's business card jars if you want them. Um, and just let me know, yeah, how you get on with this stuff. Thank you, guys. All right. Thank you very much.